by fans of high quality entertainment. I received this comment um, a couple of days ago. I'm not sure. I forget which video it was, but it's from Vincent Van Rugen 7780. Nice video, Larry. Thank you. I would like a I would like a video in which you give an introduction to your favorite bands. What record should I listen to if I want to get to know Sparks or Blue Easter Cult or Frank Zappa? Yes, or Moody Blues. I know it's not easy to pick one record for a lot of bands, because, for example, the Sparks discography is all over the place. But I would be curious what you would pick and what albums I could start with. What a great suggestion. Unfortunately, I don't take suggestions from my viewers. I make up my own content. But I thought of a great idea. I thought I would choose some of my favorite bands from my CD collection and uh, focus on a great starting point for a listener who hasn't really heard much of the band for them to check out, you know, an album to start with. All right, it's his idea. So I'm going to grab some CDs and I will be back just like that. All right, I am back and I grabbed Blue Easter Cult, Frank Zappa. Oh, I didn't get, yes. One second. So I was going to do 12, but it's going to be a baker's dozen, which is 13. So thank you, Vincent, for the uh, suggestion. Okay. In no particular order, these are all artists uh, I really love. So if you've never heard much of Yes, you know, maybe you've heard a song or two, but you haven't checked out their albums. Uh, I think a great starting off point for me is Fragile. It contains uh, one of their big hits, Roundabout, which you might already know. And the rest of the album is, you know, it's got some little short little instrumental songs, but the full songs, there's four, I think four full songs, and they are just superb. Uh, and if you end up loving this album, then I think you'll love, you know, most of the rest of their catalog. Progressive rock at its finest. And John Anderson is one of my all-time favorite singers. Now, a singer that some people, <laughs> it's an acquired taste for sure. Uh, some people might even say he's a bad singer, like Glenn Kellaway from The Basement. <laughs> but the very, f and, and some of these I've, I've chosen, it's because it was the first album that I heard by them and I became a fan with the album. So for Lou Reed, I've chosen. Coney Island Baby, which was the very first Lou Reed album I ever heard back in probably, I think the year this came out, 1976, I believe. And yeah, it's still one of my all-time favorite Lou Reed albums. Uh, like I said, his, his vocals, you have to get used to them, I guess. He's not the greatest singer, but his songs are excellent. And uh, there's also, you know, some humor. I, I'm just a gift. The song's called The Gift, and the whole line is, I'm just a gift to the women of this world. <laughs> but yeah, I, I was, I liked him right away because, you know, there is some, some humor, some kind of dark stuff, like a song called Kicks, and I've been a fan ever since. And for Frank Zappa, I'd heard about Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention, you know, since the 60s, of course. And I loved their album covers, especially the Mothers of Invention album covers. But I never heard any of the music until one day, in a record store, I bought my first Frank Zappa album. And I was lucky enough to buy one of his great ones. One Size Fits All. It's got you know, some of the, the humor that's in a lot of his, his albums, but 
the the music too is just so good he he has such a great band with him there's some great guitar solos on this just great in instrumentation throughout and i think it's a great starting point if you've never heard a frank zappa album and if anybody checks out any of these albums come back and let me know what you think of them but just remember some of these you need to listen to you know give it at least two or three lessons before you say that sucked <laughs> another band i might have seen them on tv first probably on like in the mid 70s like on in concert or something and because they were so unique i bought this album this is actually two albums in one but the first album I heard by the sensational Alex Harvey band was The Impossible Dream. And uh, their guitarist, Zal Clemmingson, if you love guitar work, he is such an underrated guitarist. And I love Alex Harvey's vocals, of course. Uh, it's just a fun album with really, really good music. And I highly recommend it. Let's hear it for some Canadian content. Now, these guys, I know. I've met them a few times. Uh, this is one of their later albums. Well, you know, from the I think, early 2000s. Yeah, 2003. But you might have heard me talk about the Northern Pikes before. And I think this is a just a very catchy... If you like pop rock with really catchy songs great choruses uh, they have three singers on this album three really good singers on this album and it's called i don't care for the album cover but the album itself is great the northern pipes it's a good life and you asked about the moody blues almost any of their early albums uh, I think you would possibly like. But I'm going to go with In Search of the Lost Chord. The music is almost like the album cover. <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's like early prog rock, pop. It's just, and one of the most talented bands with, uh, yeah, John Lodge is a great singer, Mike Pinder, Justin Hayward, uh, Ray Thomas, and their drummer, of course. Yeah, I think this is a, a nice place to start. They're one of my all-time favorite 60s bands. And speaking of prog rock, another band I've really, I've always really liked them, but I've only heard a couple of their albums uh, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s, and now I'm getting more and more of them. But this was the first album by this band I ever heard. And if you love prog rock and you haven't heard this album, I think, and you know, if you love bands like Yes and bands like that, Nectar, Remember the Future. It's actually just two songs, actually one song, Part one is on side one, and part two is on side two. And uh, I, I think it, it, the album grabs you in the first five minutes. If you don't like it in the first five minutes, forget it. <laughs> but I think, like I said, if you love prog rock, this is highly recommended. Now for Blue Easter Cult. I was going to choose their third album because that was the very first one I ever heard, Secret Treaties. But I've gone with a, uh, an album that has probably some of their best guitar work because I feel Buck Dharma is one of the most underrated guitarists and he has a lot of really great guitar work on this album. Their second tyranny and mutation 
You can't go wrong with early Blue Easter Cult for sure. And if you love, you know, hard rock, but it's the songs are catchy and uh, really, uh, really original lyrics too. So highly recommend it. One of my favorite singer-songwriters, Elvis Costello. I love his, especially love his early albums. And I would say you could start with his debut, uh, My Aim is True. But I, I think overall, the follow-up, this year's model, at least production-wise, is, is much better. And this is his first album with the band The Attractions, and they just kill it. Like, if you like great rock and tunes, this is the one to get. And, and great lyrics, too. Now, Captain Beefheart, some of you might know, maybe haven't heard him, but you've heard maybe about the, some of his crazy albums like Trope Mask Replica, which I do love. But if you want to start, you could almost go with Clear Spot because that's almost a normal, <laughs> normal album for him and his vocals are really good on it. But I'm kind of in the middle with my, and I'm choosing my favorite Captain Beefheart album, Shiny Beast, also known as Bat Chain Polar. Uh, it's just very unique. If you want to listen to something different, a little crazy, but not too crazy. And uh, it's a fun album. I've, I've played this hundreds of times. One, two, three to go. All right, let's get Sparks out of the way. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. I, I've had probably a, at least a, a dozen people or more ask me, hey, Larry, what Sparks album should I start with? And it's difficult. I know most fans would say, well, Kimono My House, one of their most popular, which is a good choice. But I would say their follow-up, Propaganda, And th this is rock-based music with, and you know, the vocals, once again, you might, uh, an acquired taste for sure. Russell back then was singing in his falsetto, but the songs are just so strong. The lyrics are amazing. And if you like synth rock music, this was a highly influential album in 1979. Sparks, number one in heaven. No guitars. And real drums on this, too. And the production is amazing. But, but the one I, I kind of always push is, if you want to get into Sparks, uh, this... This is actually a three CD, but I think there's a two CD you could buy, and that's all you need to start with. It's pretty recent. It's got most of the, except for their, their last album. It's got everything else. Sparks, Past Tense, The Best of Sparks, and it goes all the way back to a song called Computer Girl from, I think, 1967. And it just shows the different genres they've done throughout the years. And there's bound to be something you really love on this. There's going to be maybe a song or two you hate. But I think this is a great start-off point to check out Sparks. And now for a couple of recent bands I've, I've gotten into. Uh, so this first one... This was the very, I'd always heard about this band, and <laughs> believe it or not, I used to make music uh, back in the, on Acid Planet, and I'd do these kind of comedy songs and strange vocals and all that, and somebody, some people would say, hey, that sounds like Ween, it's, and I'd, I'd never heard them, until about a year ago, 
in an album exchange. And luckily, it was an album that I loved right away, because unlike um, I have the pod, which I hated on first listen, uh, and I, another one. This one, I, like I said, I loved right away. It's Ween. It's called Quebec. Excellent production. Uh, lots of different genres. Uh, some great guitar work in, on this album. It's kind of crazy. It's all over the place, but it's so good. So I would highly recommend you check out. If you're going to check out Ween, start with Quebec. And I would recommend some of their other albums, but I, I've never heard them yet. I'm waiting to buy them. And the last band is a band called Can, which is was a pretty popular band. Uh, more popular than I thought they were. <laughs> and the first album I heard uh, was Tago Mago, a double CD. I liked it right away, although... There was some of the craziest stuff I've ever heard in my life on that album, but I love it. But I think a, a really good starting off point for Cam is a more regular album called Future Days. Uh, if you like craft work, like a mixture of craft work, early Pink Floyd, it's kind of hard to describe, but yeah, I think, and you don't have to actually buy any of these albums. Go to Spotify or whatever, uh, Apple Music, and, you know, check out a song or two. And if you like the first song, Future Days, then buy this album and you will love it. I think of the can albums I've heard, this is my favorite so far. And that's it. So thank you, Vincent, for the... Uh, Great video idea. And uh, that is it. Please remember to like the video, leave a comment below, and subscribe. Bye.